martial arts. Prior to the 1950s, they seemed mysterious and so foreign to Americans. Only judo, with its tossing and tumbling, could claim a following outside Japan. The other disciplines were virtually unknown. Today, the martial arts have millions of devoted practitioners. Our fascination? Perhaps rooted in a primal instinct for self-preservation, survival. Yet the martial arts speak to human needs beyond the physical, mental discipline, spiritual serenity. Students follow time-honored traditions, a testament to ancient warriors and holy men whose fighting arts played crucial roles in history. The ancient martial arts were fighting arts, with weapons or without. Their roots were life and death. The earliest martial arts started right along with the development of language, very crude, simple methods that were developed by ancient people, mainly for protection against animals and other people. They developed out of what was uh, at hand, for example, the sticks and stones that were laying around, or just the, the human body itself, the fist or the feet. The precise origins of more sophisticated martial arts systems have been lost to time. Most evidence stems from ancient depictions in sculptures and paintings, leading some to believe that Africa is the birthplace of the martial arts. In the early 1800s, in an area called Beni Hassan, along the lower Nile in Egypt, illustrations on tomb walls, now thought to be indicative of a martial arts system, were discovered. Their date of origin is estimated at 2500 BC, centuries before the existence of any other verifiable martial arts system. We're talking about everything from empty hand combat all the way up to use of weaponry. From the 500 individual pairs of wrestling figures to infantrymen with bows and arrows, to fighters with clubs and axes and maces, to the technology of the testudo, which is a shielding device, and their use of a long-range lance, right up to the fortification. We're looking at a complete martial arts system in every sense of the word. But it was the marriage of physical combat with a philosophical system that distinguished the martial arts of Asia. Most martial arts practiced around the world today have come mainly from China, Korea, Japan, and Okinawa. Only in Asia did different styles of empty-handed combat become an art regarded as a state secret or harbored within the walls of religious monasteries. Legend has it that in the early 6th century, Bodhidharma, an Indian monk and Buddhist missionary, began a long trek from western India to China. There he would preach Buddhist doctrine. Ultimately, his journey took him to the remote Shaolin Temple in central China. The Shaolin Temple was founded in 495 AD in the Wen Dynasty and Bodhidharma came to the temple in 527 A.D. He taught many things at Shaolin, Buddhism, philosophy, meditation. Bodhidharma taught the Shaolin monks meditative breathing and stretching exercises like these that the monks named 18 Hands of the Lohan, or exercises for the greatest holiness. Some say this was a seminal influence into creating a Chinese martial art. Others disagree. 
Some Chinese scholars say that Chinese martial arts antedates the Shaolin Temple, that they were practiced in China hundreds of years, even thousands of years before this, and uh, that um, this is just one aspect of Chinese martial arts. According to legend, the monks developed their exercise routine into a martial arts form that allowed them to defend themselves and their mountain temple against bandits and warlords. The monks' exercises would come to be known as Shaolin Boxing, or Chuang Fa, Way of the Fist, and later in the West as Kung Fu. Shaolin Kung Fu spread across China and would eventually encompass hundreds of styles. Shaolin is like a, 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 a big tree. It, uh, it has many branches that offshoot from the trees, and uh, there were many different styles. Some were based on animal movements and emphasized the quick, aggressive attack method of the Chinese boxing school known as external or hard. Centuries later, Kung Fu would greatly impact the development of karate. In second century Korea, the supreme Buddhist monk Wong Kwang Topsa created a strict philosophical and moral code. Along with intellectual pursuits and martial arts, the code was taught to the sons and nobles in the kingdom of Shila, one of three ancient Korean provinces. They are what we still abide by today, the Hwarang Ogye. Um, loyalty to country, filial piety, uh, trust and brotherhood among friends, never retreating in the face of the enemy, and uh, mercy in killing, discriminate in killing, never take a life without a cause. Upon completing his schooling, a young adult male in Shila received the title Warang, or Flowering Man. It can be read as a person coming, blossoming into maturity, or because he was Buddhist influenced, attaining enlightenment. The sixth century Warang fought and succeeded in uniting for the first time ever ancient Korea's three provinces. The art of the Hwarang, called Hwarangdo, was a result of the monk Bapsa, blending hard linear techniques and soft circular movements. Hwarangdo would become an important predecessor to modern day Taekwondo, Korea's national martial art. Most of Japan's ancient martial arts were established with or developed from a samurai tradition beginning in the 9th century. A samurai, one who serves, was born into the samurai class and trained from an early age to become a warrior. By the 15th century, the samurai's duty was to carry out the fighting orders of a feudal lord to whom he had pledged loyalty. One domain was trying to take over the other domain and through alliances and through betrayal and fighting they uh, uh, they were all vying with each other. Bushido, a code of ethics similar to that of the Hwarang warriors was formulated to help the samurai become perfect warriors. They studied bujutsu or military arts. These included the use of the spear and the bow and arrow as well as horsemanship. The true symbol of the samurai though was his sword. The sword was considered as the soul of the samurai, so that was his most important weapon. That was the weapon that uh, he carried by his side uh, at all times, and actually that was a weapon that he wore that symbolized his status as a samurai. While kinjutsu is a general term for all samurai swordsmanship, Iaijutsu was the art of drawing the sword. The idea was to 
draw and cut and dispatch your opponent in one movement. It was said that uh, by using one hand, you gain the advantage of uh, one inch over your opponent. And I guess that made a difference in these life and death duels. The samurai engaged in mortal combat with viciousness and efficiency. For these warriors, facing death on the battlefield, Chang, or Zen doctrine, carried enormous influence. The direct and immediate approach of the Zen Buddhist philosophy, don't think, just do, and its concept of the enlightened man as indifferent to life and death had great appeal for these warriors. During the feudal period's intense fighting, many samurai who fought losing battles were cast out from their noble ranks and sought refuge in mountain areas. Under pressure from government forces that would destroy them, these warriors perfected secretive martial arts techniques and developed special weapons to become the world's first practitioners of guerrilla warfare. Ninjutsu is the art of stealth, and the ninja were feudal spies. What they were well known for was having a network of people so they knew what was going on, when, where. They could use this information then to set up uh, systems to protect their communities when other invading troops were making the plans to invade. The idea was to be able to go in somewhere invisibly, know what was going on, and then move away. So maybe like a modern James Bond story, where a person would disguise themselves as a cleaner-upper, or disguise themselves as a mail deliverer, or disguise themselves as a caterer, whatever it would take to go into an area that would otherwise be guarded, get the information and come out. The ninja became legendary. The ruses in which they dealt led common people to fear them and hold them in awe. In 1372, Okinawa, the largest island in the Ryukyu archipelago, was formally recognized by China. Later, as a gift, Okinawa received a permanent colony of Chinese craft people and their families, including Buddhist monks and others skilled in Chinese martial arts. they began teaching the Okinawans. The result was the creation of an Okinawan style of martial art influenced by Chuan Fa, the Chinese way of the fist. It would be called Te, or hand. In 1609, Japan's fierce Satsuma samurai clan began a battle to conquer Okinawa. The island kingdom was defeated, and all Okinawan weapons were confiscated and outlawed. The natives, for their own protection, were forced to improvise methods of weaponry using simple farming implements such as sickles, staffs, and millstone handles. This was called kobujutsu art of weapons.